Hello everybody and welcome to Working Title Productions. My name is Ben, his name is Ed, and we're here Hello. to bring you another episode of Movie Talk at long last. Our apologies, apologies for being gone for so long. It has been a little while, but life gets busy around Christmas time. There's so many commitments that everybody needs to make. But we are back and we're here to bring you Rogue One because movies don't stop around Christmas time. They just keep going and Star Wars has decided to plant its feet firmly in the Christmas season and... It's working pretty well. Like yeah. they, they rake yeah. in the dosh yeah. now. Um, Rogue One I feel is bad for those small movies that usually try mm. and do well during Christmas. Mm. So everyone else is sing Star Wars. Hey man, let's release our Christmas movie at Christmas. Star Wars. Rip. This is a good movie, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I liked it. I liked it. Thoroughly a enjoyable, <laughs> even though it's a prequel. Hashtag yes. Rogue One is a prequel. Yes. Um, this is like the events immediately preceding the original Star Wars film. Mm. Um, like this film goes straight from end of Rogue One right into the beginning of A New Hope without mm. spoiling specifically how that happens they're very close together time wise um, mm. so good yeah so like plot wise this is the story of how the rebels actually got their hands on the Death Star plans and how they were able to actually exploit those weaknesses to stop the giant moon of death that is the Death Star. But that's it's, no moon. It's a space station. Oh, great memories. Um, where do we even begin, Ed? Um, like, I don't know, just, I suppose just general non-spoiler thoughts on the movie. Yeah, obviously. I, I suppose we um, like characters. Do we want to talk about characters first? Right. You want to talk about characters first? Characters are good. Characters are largely forgettable, actually, in my opinion. Oh, okay. Not, not, I don't like many of them that much. Um, I like the core Rogue One crew, and then, but then there are a couple of others that were kind of whatever. Yeah. About. See, not even, I don't even like the entire core Rogue One crew. See, I reckon... I like, I reckon on, have you seen it twice yet? No. See, I've seen it twice. I reckon when you see me and you'll be like... Okay, I'm seeing it tonight. Like, there's a couple Immediately of, after this review, I'm going to go see it There's again. a couple of guys who don't click that, that you don't really notice as much in the first room, but in the second room, you're like, ooh, yeah, this guy. Like Gore Sorrera? Who really doesn't need to be in the movie? Saw Guerrero, you mean, not Gore Serrera. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, that guy. Um, no, he's actually my least favorite character in the movie. Yeah, I thank think you. I think he's he just... is boring <sighs> as I like. Totally the performance is like just like whatever, and I don't. He's really played up in the trailers too. Yeah. There's a lot of things played up in the trailers that aren't in the movie. Yeah. Like the movie is very very different. Anyway, well, you want to go through the characters and talk about Ginoso? Is perfectly fine. Good character. Yeah. Like, Good stuff. Felicity Jones does a great job. But for me personally, I don't know that there was much there for the character to do. I, I agree. I, she didn't do much growing. Yeah, I thought it was it was weird. Because her whole character thing was just like, oh yeah, I'm I'm mildly thankful that I'm not... not hang on, no, that's kind of a spoiler. Um, she was just kind of like... She went, she went very quickly from... Oh yeah, don't really care about the rebellion to like. Hey, let, spearhead the rebellion. Yeah, let's do the whole thing with the thing. And yeah. just um, plot wise, and plot wise, she's very heavily involved. Yeah, but story wise, it's like yeah, like nothing. And apart from that, that like that flip, which comes kind of early on in the movie, there's really not much like there for her apart from just yeah. her being just like the main action hero or whatever. That said, in being an actual living, breathing character, Felicity Jones really brings her mm. to life. It's like, a good performance. Yeah. Cons- yeah, considering how little she's got to work with, I feel like she does really, really good job. Um, I'm going to move straight along because yeah. I've got nothing to say about Genoso, really. Cassian Andor? Cassian Andor. Um, He's the guy that got the good development. Yeah, and I really that like his characterization. Stuff. Like I The agree. very first scene we see him in is like an excellent example of what a real intergalactic war would be like without mm. spoiling it. Yeah. It's just very well done and you understand very quickly that this isn't black versus white like you would mm. have seen in the original Star Wars trilogy. Mm. There are guys in the Empire doing good things almost and you know just trying to do the right thing and there are guys in the Rebellion who make really dirty shoddy decisions and you're like ooh. But at the wow. same time, there are also decisions that have to be made. And that's exactly. what's cool about it. It's exactly. so great. It's, it's more Fifty what? Shades of Grey than Black versus White. and that's... Did you really have to say that? Look, you know what? Fifty Shades of Grey was a term before it was a shitty sexualized novel. 
Okay, it was a term referring to the fact that not everything is clear cut. Anyway, and that is what I intended. Yeah, and that's so. and that's probably the main takeaway from this movie is that things are super great in this movie, mm. and it's pretty cool. I mean, it's great. It's great at the start of the movie, but towards the end, it go. It's like, it's, yeah, it's mostly black and white. But that is yeah. But like that, I suppose that blur between the two factions is embodied by what Cassian Andor is. He really brings that to life. He is a very interesting character. Mm. Um, the accent kind of distracted me a little bit. I don't know if that's Diego Diego Luna's I so. real accent. But, um, like, if it, if it is, I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm glad that they got, um, actually... I mean, he was born in Mexico, point. so I'm, I'm assuming so. Probably is his original accent then. Yeah. Um, so, like, you know, I got past that pretty quickly because I was impressed that the film has just cast people from, like, all walks of life. This isn't white person, white person, white person, white person, token black person. This is literally, like, as many different social backgrounds as you could get in mm. this film. And it's great to see that, you know, because, like, in a intergalactic war, you probably are going to see people... Excuse me, people of all different races. And now, but but first, but first, counterpoint: having that diversity is great for a movie that we're watching, but doesn't make sense within the Star Wars universe. No, you're right; it really doesn't. I was talking about this with someone like, like, why couldn't we have one of the Rogue One members like be just like this random alien race and have them be be given character development? Like, think about, think about what alien, like alien, so a non-human species in Star Wars in any Star Wars movie has been given character development. None. None. And and like and it's a shame because that that, that shit that Anakin trains in the Clone Wars series of the cartoon. Hey, are you talking smack about Ashoka Tano? Ashoka Tano is the best. No, I'm saying she gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She gets. Yeah, apart, apart from apart from like stuff in in, in the Clone, Clone Wars, Wars main series. Rebels, but I'm saying yeah. main series. Nothing. No, no nothing. One. No one. Like Chewie. Chewie. <laughs> yeah, Chewie. Chewie counts, right? No. Watto? What does Chewie say? Watto? Watto? No. <laughs> like, no. yeah, and that's what There's I'm saying. No like, like, why, why, can't, why can't we have an, an alien, like, not even... They don't have to be a lead character, but, like, like as a secondary character, like, give them stuff to do. Yeah, like, especially in, like, a movie like Rogue One, where you can play exactly. those themes of race a little bit. Especially where it's trying to be so grounded. Um, yeah. Like, it... Anyway... That, that's just a thought I had while I was thinking about like the Star Wars universe in general. Like the diversity that we see in this movie is great for us. Doesn't make sense, and it never has made sense in the Star Wars universe. Yeah. Why are humans always have to definitely fight? a great point. Digressing though, I do like Cassian Andor, mm. uh, Diego Luna. You know, if that's his original voice. That's fine. I'll get over it because that's the reality of how he would talk then. Mm. Um, you know, it's not so distracting that it ruins the movie for you. You just mm. need a minute or two to adjust to it, and then you're fine. Um, Alan Tudyk? Alan Tudyk? I don't know how you say his name. K250. K2SO. Oh yeah, good job, Ben, you idiot. Yeah, come on. Um, he get, he has some of the best lines in the entire thing. Like he, so when we, when we saw it, we, it was like a Thursday morning. So there were mm. people in the session, but like. Still waking it was, up. Yeah, still, <laughs> still waking up and like kind of like a. I mean, we were well away. Yeah, but like, and like, it was like a core I mean, I would assume it was, like, kind of a core Star Wars audience. Like, if you're ro- yeah. well, rolling out on a Thursday yeah. morning to go see Star Wars Probably. on the morning it comes out. It's the, it's the sort of people who can't make a midnight sit- stream, so they go first thing in the morning. Yeah. Um, and, like, and and he got good laughs in that session. I, but then I also saw a Saturday night session, which, which which you would assume is much more just, like, standard moviegoer. Got a lot of laughs in that session. Yeah. Like, really good response for the most part to a lot of his lines and which is well deserved because they're really well delivered and probably some of them are probably improv as well like they're very it clever. does sound very organic he is mm. very very funny he's a lot because he because he did mocap he did mocap for it wasn't like he just oh did okay yeah, yeah yeah so like wow he would have been able to roll on and say that and say those things on set bouncing off the other actors yeah um <coughs> so that was great there's not really much to say about him because he's a droid it's not like they're gonna give him a bunch of character development and as such he does he does get his moments in the film though mm. like, more than just funny moments without, yeah. without spoiling he does really get his moments yeah as um, does every character I think yeah yeah everybody 
at some point does. Then we have uh, Donnie Yen, who plays Chirut Inwi, which is like the Force-sensitive monk with the he's, star. He's the guy you've seen on all of your memes on your Facebook mm. feed recently. Yes. Yeah. I'm one with the Force, force and the Force, force is with me. me. I'm one, one with the Force and Force is with me. Um, really pro- great Probably... No? Yeah, yeah, probably my yeah. favourite. Yeah. Like, him and um, Baze Melba's probably my two favourites. Definitely. Um, I used to splash juice on my face. <laughs> nice. Um, it's... The way they're introduced into the story isn't fantastic. No, it's, it's definitely It's not. actually pretty, clunky. pretty pathetic, honestly. Um, but it it's really good to have them along for the ride because they're... Not, they're super witty in parts, which is really cool. Like, there's a great part where uh, the, uh, um, one of Saw Gerrera's um, rebels is putting a bag over his head, and he says, Are you serious? I'm blind! <laughs> and it's amazing! <laughs> it's an ama- so and, it, and it's so funny. perfectly delivered as well. Like, it's like, it's 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 great. It's like, just oh, phenomenal. You would forgotten about that, have you? <laughs> that was so Are you funny. serious? I'm, I'm blind. blind! Like, it's it's great stuff. Um, And... And then the way that they're integrated into the final act is really, really cool and really important and just gives, and their presence just gives like a lot of just like punch and weight and just the stuff that they're doing in that final hour. So it's really, really cool and I'm a big fan of it. Um, so yeah, they were really cool. Ben? Yeah. Wen Zhang? Is that how Wen Zhang. Uh, who plays Maze Balbus. Ma- Bays Malbus. Yeah. There you go. He's got some he's got some awesome dreads. Yeah. Some facial hair, got a massive gun. Him cool and ass. um Chirut Imway or however you say his name. They're a really great combination, aren't they? Now right. I heard somewhere that they're that they're supposed to be like a gay couple. I don't really get that sense. I thought they were just what? like kind of like partners in action. Yeah. I know, right? They I look thought, like I thought partners in crime. Weird. Yeah, like I yeah, I don't think they're like supposed to be like Romantically involved or anything I mean, like that. If they are, they're close because they're like uh, they've got like a, like yeah. a bond of brotherhood. They were both yeah. guardians of the look. If they are gay, the temple. good for them. Um, didn't really get a sense of that in the movie. Mm. I thought they were just partners in crime, but they work really well as partners in crime. Mm. They balance each other out really well. They balance the film out really well. They have great moments together. They have great moments on their own. Um, Baze Malibus. He's like the big tanker guy, you know, with his big gun, you know. If you're mm. playing, like, your Team Fortress 2s or whatever, he's just the guy that rocks up with massive weapons. Like, all right, let's do this. Like, I'm going to bring some, like, Star Wars theory in for a second. So the Ooh. way that, that blasters work Ooh. in Star Wars Universe is they're, like, they have clips, but they're, like, almost batteries. Yeah. That's how they run. And so, and so once, so as you're using as you're using it, it's either depleting... Or it overheats and it's in the electric recharge or whatever. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. This guy has his battery pack for his gun is like a tank on his back. Like a giant just laser tank just chilling there so that they can just use his gun as much as possible. How does this one that? Would it explode? I have no idea. I have no idea. Like one massive And, and so that's why his gun is linked to the thing on his back because it, it, that's what's charging his massive rifle. Like it's so cool. It's really cool. And he's given one of the best moments in the entire film. Yeah, mate. Um... It's, yeah. yeah, cool stuff. It's so hard to explain this without really talking <laughs> about them. I, I know, like spoilers. Ben Mendelsohn is awesome. Krennic. Krennic's is a great stuff. douchebag. Uh, Krennic was great. Yeah, Mendelsohn does a great job. Um, mm. He's really... He really captures, like, what those Imperial higher-ups were really like in the original trilogy, but he's, like, so much more interesting than, mm. say, um, bloody... Yes, thank yeah. you. General like, Tarkin's Tarkin. interesting, but, like, the way it was portrayed in, yeah. in, in that time, it was very, very, like... Obvious. Like, just, like, low-key. Yeah. It's like, if, well, Krennic, like, brings it. Yeah. Like, he is a he, character. He's intimidating to all of his officers, but he's got aspirations. But then mm. when he goes up against Vader, you mm. know, you suddenly see him switch to something like this... Like, the obedient Hard-trying, yeah, obedient yeah. servant. He's just really trying to prove himself. Um, and on that, because I kind of want to like skip all of these people because they don't really do much. And oh, skips... Saw Gerrera? Oh, Saw Gerrera is useless. We mentioned that. Um, yeah, boring character. Brody Rook, I actually really Birdie, liked. Brody Rook was pretty cool. I feel like he doesn't really get a chance to do much. Yeah, a lot... Mads Mikkelsen is fine as Galen Erso. <laughs> he doesn't do much either. Don't, don't send the next one. Oh, yeah. 
Fair enough. Um, so I'm not sure. Sh- who the fuck is General Draven? Uh, the guy who gives the orders to uh, Cassian Endor about those really specific things as they go into... Ah, yes. Um, Excellent. He's fine. He's fine. Uh, the lady who plays Mon Mothma yeah, is fine. fine. She actually returns from the prequel trilogy. And then from then on, we have, we have secondary characters who... We're not going to talk about. We're not going to talk about. So but the characters. Krennic talks to Darth Vader. Yeah. And in his very is limited... That's no, it's in the trailers. Oh, no, it the trailers. In his very limited screen time, Darth Vader is so frightening and menacing and cool mm. and just like... You just don't want anything to do with this guy. He is he just has two main scenes, one of which is much better than the other. Like the like the, the first scene there's him. The scene with Krennic is fine. fine. Like it's it's good. He drops a pun, which is interesting for Vader. Um, yeah. And but like for the most part, it's as cool, intimidating. Like because like I the way I I looked at it is like Vader doesn't want to be like he doesn't want to like completely like. 100% demoralise his officers. He just kind of wants to, wants them to know that he's still in charge. Yeah. So that's what that's that's why that's 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 how I explained why Vader was kind of talking to him on a, like a level playing field. Um, at then, first. At first. <laughs> and then Kenny said something stupid, and then Vader made a, a in, an interesting pun. Really I don't know how. General, I'm not going to say the rest of the line. I I still I still don't know how I feel about the pun. It was. I liked it. It was, I, it I was liked mildly it. entertaining. It's, it's not like Under the Mask, he's like, ah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, he's just like, yeah, no, I'm going to fuck with you, boy. Yeah. I'm going to fuck with you, because you stood out of the line. Yeah, anyway. And so for me, it works. It works really well. And then the other things, can't talk about it, because it's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Telephone is so scary. And now we're going to run through all the other aspects of a film really quickly because we've been going for nearly 18 minutes and Whoa. we've just talked about characters. All right, Whoa. so um, the pacing of this film is... Definitely the biggest flaw. Yes, definitely the biggest flaw. Um, we, but those, it mostly occurs in the first half of the movie because the first half of, of the movie is a mess. But it's um, also kind of necessary. Yeah, I agree. Like We wouldn't have the payoff of all the big moments in the second half of the film if we didn't slog through the first half of the film. And that's just mm-hmm. the nature of a film where you're introducing six new main characters or however many we just talked about. Yeah. Six new main characters? Six. Quite a few. Yeah. Not including Bodie Rook yeah. and Silver Arrow. Six. Um, um, yeah. Jinx. Um... Then there's also... The action is really cool. Um, once again, we've talked a lot about how Rogue One is going to be, like, this really grounded thing, and it certainly is here. It's really cool seeing, like, just, like, guys running along a beach and, like, at AT just, like, bearing down on them. Yeah. That sort of stuff is awesome, and it's really well done. And just the way just the rebels quickly. move through the jungle and stuff, really, really cool. This film... Like, you say, like, the film is grounded, like, metaphorically, but the film is also quite literally grounded. A lot of this stuff is shot from the perspective of someone standing on the ground, looking up at buildings, looking up at ATATs, looking up at, like, all of these ships flying past. Very like, clever. Yeah, like, you literally get a real sense of, of scale. And Gareth Edwards, I was trying to remember what Gareth Edwards film I'd seen before. It was Godzilla, Godzilla yeah. which I really like. I love the 2014 Godzilla film for what it is. It's not incredibly smart, but it also knows it doesn't need to be. Uh, Gareth Edwards really brings his A-game here in terms of direction. He really does his best to take really all of sad. these characters and all this content and just sort of bring it all to a fine point. And he really does that by the end of the film and the way he chooses to shoot the Death Star, mm, um, great all of stuff. the different Star great Destroyers, stuff. Yeah. the way he shoots, the way he ch- chooses to display Vader mm. Is really really interesting as well. And him and his cinematographer, I have no idea who it was. They did a great job. Yeah. Um, and even though Eddie, we've talked about like how it's super great, it also does stick with the classic Star Wars three planes of action of a final yeah. act. Yeah. Like <clears throat> I believe it's Lucas who came up with the idea with this. Like to have a battle on the ground, battle in, in the sky, and then the main kind of like emotional conflict happening somewhere else. Yeah. And that's totally present in this final act. There's a massive space battle. There I'd say I'd battle. say it's my favorite space battle of Souls that we've ever gotten. Like, yeah, there are moments no, in it that are really, really cool. The only and thing that really clever. The only thing that beats it is like the opening space mm. battle from Revenge of the Sith. See, I know you love the opening space of, of Revenge of the Sith. I'm kind of whatever on it. Like it's <laughs> it's a joke. I was just trying to piss people off. Like I love it, but I know no one else does. Um, I think it's fine. I think it's a little long, if anything, and I don't like buzz droids. Oh, um, uh, oh yeah, yeah, the space battle, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the space battle is awesome, and then the ground conflict is really cool. The 
but then that main so like obviously when we talk about the three fields of action in the Star Wars movie, obviously it's usually something centered around the Jedi is that third one. Here it's no Jedi. There's obviously no Jedi because there are no Sith. Jedi in this movie. But it, it's I think it's the weakest of the three. Like what they're doing the tasks kind that kind of boring. The tasks that they're doing are mundane compared to what everyone else is doing, which is a shame. Well, I mean, like, but it they're has, also you know, necessary it has to tasks. It's like the, the yeah, it's the most necessary of tasks, but it's what everybody else is doing around it to make sure that it can happen. That's yeah. so much more interesting. Which is a shame. Um, but like, um, Felicity Jones and Diego Luna and Ben Mendelsohn um do their best to carry it, and they make it worth watching. Yeah, definitely. It's not. It's not a slog fest. We've yeah. really run through more of the problems with this film more than the good points, mm. but this is actually quite an excellent film. Mm. Like the final mm. hour. Yeah, oh. the music is excellent. I really like the music. You know, this isn't like some bland grey colour palette. Like this is kind of vibrant and popping, but without feeling like it's silly or just like really old school mm. space opera. It's quite clearly more modern like, space I opera. think I think Scarif is my new favourite Star Wars planet yeah like I enough. thought it was really cool oh That's can awesome. we talk about oh we can't oh. well we're gonna do a big the Death spoiler. Star's really we're great. gonna do a, a big spoiler section there are and then there are a couple of issues with some CGI but they're also kind of spoilers so we won't talk about that um, true do we want to move on to the spoilers now I think I think we're done uh, right. basically everyone who hasn't seen the movie yet and you've watched this star thank you Thank you so much for doing that. Subscribe. Check out our Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash working title YouTube. Tweet us, at BenchWaters01, at Edward Noack. All right, go watch the movie. We'll see you later. You can come back and watch the spoilers later, which we're going to talk about now. You want to go? Oh, I was just going to do a fun wrap-up on the movie. Like, oh, if, okay, if, you're a, if you're a Star Wars fan, there is absolutely no reason why you're not going to like this movie. You just go see it. True. 11 out of 7. Great time. <laughs> anyway. Now we can talk about spoilers. Um... I don't know, may as well jump straight into the CGI. Um, yes, yeah, so let's talk about the CGI. Ben Moff Tarkin is in this movie way too much. I don't know that he's in it way too much, but it's definitely like... Oh, You'll notice it in your oh, second okay. screen. Like, they definitely could have played it right back, because here's the problem. Krennic is such a lively character as an Imperial yeah. officer. Seeing Tarkin stand there and just being his classic, like, reserved, stony self... Yeah, was definitely. actually kind of disappointing. Like, it's cool to and see And, like, more this Tarkin. was the one guy that could give Vader orders besides Palpatine. Yeah. And, um, you know, he's just kind of there. And I like Tarkin. And you can I tell he's dead. And, like, Tarkin... You look like... Really it, cool. it looks like it's a dead man on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Quite little. And, like... No, no. All respect to, um... I don't know. Trying to remember the actor's I name. I don't know his name here. This is this is going so badly. All respect to a guy whose name we didn't even memorize. We're so terrible. Ah, uh, Peter Cushing. Thank you, Peter Sorry. Cushing. Um, yeah. all respect to Peter Cushing. And um, like, it's not like the talking stuff the that way we get is really bad. Created. Like it's it's cool. Like I like I like. It's just off putting. It's just yeah. It, there's just too much of it. Like he just can't carry it. Like. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 like Krennic does. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's a shame. Like they, but they can't. They gotta have him in there somewhere because they have to explain how it comes under his control. But like, I yeah, don't know. It's true, but like, it's I, not him. I don't know. Very I, yeah, well. I kind of feel like he could have been in it a lot less. Like, and just leave a little bit to the imagination. Yeah. Um, second case of CGI was Princess Leia, who's even worse. Yes. No, I could see how bad that CGI was. Yeah, the, the CGI was. itself Watching was a bad. Cam but like, scene. like, because I actually watched a couple of the scenes again on YouTube. There's like shitty camcorder mm. scenes which are being taken down every five minutes. But mm. I saw this one, and like she pops up, and like even on the shitty camcorder, I can see how bad that CGI is. Yeah, like, the that CGI is so itself isn't great, but she they only really have to nail one emotion with the CGI, and they manage to more so than they do. Talk. Like we're talking, they have to like they try and do a lot of different like emotions, yeah, like yeah, just yeah. like like expressions and that sort of thing, and just doesn't really work. Here they don't have to do one, and it's hope, and it's fine. Hope. Um, but at the same time, like really, 
Just leave it to the imagination. We know who it is. Yeah, definitely. We see, we see the the shot of of the back of her hair with the buns and stuff and the white clothing. We know even it's her. even just like a side shot. We don't need her entire face. And it's the same thing with Tarkin. Like when when Tarkin's introduced, we see his reflection in the window, and that was I cool. That, that would have been the heaps. whole movie. That yeah. would have been more than enough. All yeah, of them we have like needed. Half half hours worth of footage. We get it. Peter Cushing's dead. Star Wars came out. 1977, nearly 40 years ago, like, oh my goodness, we get it, we get it, the reflection's all we ever needed, <sighs> they just push it a little yeah. too far, um, but like, they're really trying to service the fans, but it kind of just gets in the way of the film as a whole. Mm. Um, yep, and as you said before, first act is a mess, they jump to about 20 billion different planets in the first 10 yeah, minutes, um, um, the opening sequence with, um, uh, Galen Erso being brought back into Imperial Fold was probably a little long. Um, yeah. It was it was cool, um, but yeah, just a tiny bit long. And then the fact that they were jumping around so much to try and build up, oh, like this pilot's with this information, that sort of thing. And now the pilot's with Saw Gerrera. Yeah. And then Saw Gerrera's got to brainwash him for some reason, yet the brainwash yeah, doesn't why? work. Yeah, why? But then the brainwashing doesn't work because... Whatever reason. Because like, it's, raisins. It's, it's, it's because raisins. It's really frustrating. Um, it's so unnecessary. And then, yeah, and then we get that really quick flip for like Jin Urso. Like she's she walks in on Sorgre and she's like, "Yeah, they just need me to get an audience with you. I'm out now. Whatever." And then she said, "And then oh, it's about Spielberg And she's like, "Oh my gosh, I'm so oh. sad." Oh, um, which I can kind of understand when you haven't seen it, like your father and that sort of thing. Like, but like at the same time, it was like a very cl- quick flip, and now she's like risking her life and stuff, and now yeah. she's giving her life to revenge. And that's what I like most about this movie, and that I predicted. It's on camera. I predicted this. Everybody died. Yeah, I yeah. predicted it. It's on camera. There is a record that I got this right. Everybody died. Oh yeah, quite literally everyone. Which. Going to a movie and being dead right about what happens is kind of a shame. Even the villain dies. Even the villain dies. See, I didn't pick that. How I, fascinatingly... Actually, I mean, I probably did in my uh, subconscious. Like, Chris look, you know what? In... You, you did good, Ed. I did good. You did All good. the Rogue One team died, and that was cool as... Some of them had much better death scenes than others. Like, um, as much as much as I said that I really like Bodie Rook, like, there were just times where I thought, like, yeah, this guy... I could kind of, like, see where this guy's coming from, and it's cool stuff. They were, uh, like his death scene was a big yeah. shame. Like just grenade thrown into the hull, and he just had to stand there and take it. That's actually un- no that's what unlucky. I kind of like it though, because like that's just the reality of war, and mm. the fact that he would die so really Like yes, I finally got this task done. I finally saved everyone. Yep, now you can die. Yeah, it's it's it, it, like yeah, I suppose that's true. But like compared, but like I was compared okay with the way he to died. what with what we got with with Chirut and Bays. Oh, they gosh. absolutely set the stand for death they, scenes. The way they just <clears throat> give themselves. That was awesome. Like, Chirut was really cool because we had that amazing I'm on the force and the force with me. Yeah. I'm on the force. And like, everyone likes to really make cool. a meme of it but the way he does it that very last time it's and like... it's not... And it's not even him being force sensitive it's him trusting in the force. Yeah. Like, he says like the... F- what, Everything happens as the Force wills it. Yeah. He believed that the Force willed that he would make it to that panel and turn it on. Or he just dies or because he would that's die. what's meant to happen. Exactly. And that was awesome. It was really, really cool. And like just the horror on Baze's face as he was walking out. Oh, it was just And then the way so he gives good. himself... Oh, that was like so he good. takes quite a few lasers. Yeah, yeah. Doosh. Yeah. Doosh. Just gets up a few more times. Bang, 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 bang. Mm. He goes, goes falls out. over to die and shoots one last guy as he's falling over to die. Goes out by grenade as well. Yeah. Um, it's pretty great. Good stuff. That was and probably then, the best um, death in the whole thing. Um, Jin and Cassian get a very low-key death. Um, no, but it's kind of like... Yeah, but it's also quite nice. It's yeah. also like really nice. And I thought that... I would, like how they didn't force them to like make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know, been, right. I, I would have been, been really so mad if they, if they made it. Like, if, yeah. it, it went, but they don't. Because they went from like not really liking each other to, and like Cassian was going to kill... Galen at one point to being like we we have this mutual respect and we've done this thing that's much bigger than us for and we moment, recognize that for a moment when I hug and I actually thought they were gonna kiss I'm like don't don't you do it yeah. that's just nope that's not what would happen here also, yeah. people have no reason to fall in love and oh good they didn't also Diego Luna like kind of accidentally looked at the camera as he died 
Did he? Yeah. Wow, I'm gonna watch out for like, that. Like, like, like they're like hugging and stuff, and we get that lovely side on shot, and then as like the blasties like overtake them, he kind of just like kind of like looks back, like it's really weird. Like I'm, just, I'm just Hi like, guys. like it was so, it was really. I was like, I wow. saw it both times, and I was just like, really. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, K two so as a pretty cool death by locking them in the vault. That's cool, but they're not really locking them. His death cause... was probably my favorite. Death. He's a robot. Yeah. Was my favorite. It was cool. Mm. Like his commitment, the way he just gives himself, it's like, nope, Solid. this needs to happen. Smack. Mm. He's um, awesome. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then and then as we talked about before, that like that really cool like action from ground up sort of thing, really really cool. The way they film his Death Star explosions. Yeah, good stuff. Fuck. Yeah, it's really cool. So intense. So I I hadn't even thought about that the Death Star could just p- target specific things. I was just yeah. assumed it was a planet killer through and through. But it's cool that they can just do just these really specific um, mm. target targeting things that still causes heaps of destruction to the area around it. Those things were really cool. Um, and then yeah, and so yeah, and then both times on Jeddah and on um, Scarif. Really, really cool. You know what I love though is that like the Empire can just play it off as a media shower. It's like, just tell them it was a media shower. We didn't do this. Well, they said it was a mining accident. Oh, sorry, a mining Jedi. accident. Yeah. I don't know how they explained it on Scarif. Yeah. I mean, well, they they destroyed Alderaan less than twenty four hours later after Scarif, so True. they probably didn't need to. <laughs> Pretty soon. Yeah, not long after. A few days, at most. Not long. Well, no, because Leia's on the Death Star when Alderaan gets destroyed. Like, she had just been yeah, captured yeah, yeah, yeah. and they destroy Alderaan. Yeah, true. I feel like it's not that long. Yeah. Two days at most. Um, and yeah, that's the other cool thing about this movie. Like, it finishes right before New Hope starts. Um, and it gives so much context to New Hope as well. Like, everyone complains about the Death Star's flaw in New Hope. Like, oh, yeah. well, they just build exhaustion. They're like, hey, it's a purposeful thing that, that, this, that this rebel secretly did. That's yeah. cool. Um... The, f- the opening scene of New Hope has so much more gravity because of the ending of Rogue One. Yeah, Like, definitely. you see how scared those soldiers are at the start of New oh, Hope, and they're God. like, holy shit, holy shit. And that's because they've just seen Darth Vader wreck shop in their ma- in their main ship. They've re- he's already killed half of their friends. Now they have to watch so him cool. kill them. Mm. And that Vader scene is so good. Like, he's just like, shoo, shoo, shoo. Uh, force push up here, force push you guys back. Well, I'm going to slice this gonna, dude who I've pinned to the ceiling. I'm going to hold your blaster fire and then throw it back at you. I'm going to stab this dude through a door. And it's really cool. And, like, you know how the door doesn't open uh, they, properly? Yeah, they're desperately trying to open the door. Yeah, you know how the door doesn't open properly? He just flings it open. It goes from, help us, help us, help us, help us, help us, yeah. to take this and run for your life. Run the fuck away from here, you We're not... Just go! Oh, uh, it's so good. This is the end. My only... Oh, yeah. But, no, they're so desperately trying to open that door. They can't do it. Mm. And then Vader just force push the door open. Yeah. Like, he's not even trying to just... Mm. Okay, let's keep going. Mm. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. He um, deflects so many blazes so quickly, too. He's like, dush, 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 dush. Yeah, because we've only really ever seen Reserved Vader in, like, the original trilogy. Mm. Like, even even in Return of Jedi fight, he's still kind of like... They're still going with the goal of turning Luke, basically. Yeah, he's and not so, actually trying to defeat him. Yeah, and same with Empire. Like, he's not trying to defeat him. Oh, yeah, him. in he, Empire, yeah, he's, he's just toying just with toying him the with whole him. time. That's why Empire's still Like, great. he's never in um, danger of losing that fight. Yeah, exactly. Um, and But, like, here, he's just like, alright, let's do it. And that's good stuff, man. It's good stuff. And, like, that, that shot where it's, like, all dark and they're just waiting and then just the lights, it lights yeah. up and he's oh just... Oh, my God. Oh, I know what you say. Like, I can hear him breathing. I can hear him breathing. When's he going to come in? And then the lights up, lights up, like, fuck, he's already here. <laughs> so good. I actually jumped in my it's, ship. Like, <laughs> it's so good. Um, Like, that, th- this movie is worth watching for that scene alone. And it's worth yeah. watching for a lot more than that. But that scene, oh, it's so good. Um, Bail Organa is in this movie a little bit too much as well. Yeah, yeah, like, like I, I, I purposely watched that I don't know for that he's in it in my too second movie. Like, much. I mean, think about it. It's like, ah, uh, I hope you have someone you can trust. I would trust her with my life. See, that's not bad. <laughs> that's not bad. Like, but earlier on, during Jin Erso's first meeting with Mon Mothma and General Draven, yeah, they're talking and talking, and then Bell just steps out of the shadows, but he doesn't say anything in that scene. He's just there. 
Yeah. Super weird. It's really weird. I'll be sure to watch out for it. Yeah, definitely do. Um, like I thought, I was like, really? You're just gonna like have it just like there? Just go, oh, it's Bella Lugana. Oh, well, God, mm-hmm. prequels. Um. Um, I mean, you've got to tie it into the prequels a bit. The prequels are still canon. Yeah, exactly. But he doesn't need to be in that specific scene because he doesn't do anything in that scene. Yeah. General Draven and Cassian and Mon Mothma all have things to do in that scene, but he doesn't. He's just there for, like, the fact that, like, hey, uh, look at me, I'm Bell Lugan. I don't remember me. Um, but then, like... But then, yeah, later on in the big council meeting, that makes more sense because he's a big part of the rebellion. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We understand this is a longer one, and we apologise for bringing it out as late as we have. That's the unfortunate nature of Christmas time, though. Um, tell us what you thought. Let us know your thoughts on Rogue One. Let us know your thoughts on all of the upcoming solo films and the episodic saga films we still have to go. Um, as we mentioned to everybody who left for the spoiler-free stuff, you can subscribe below to check out more of our content. You can check out our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash working title YouTube. And you can also now get notifications on YouTube for when we post new videos. Which will, So you, if you click that little bell that's next to the subscribe button, then you'll get notifications. Yeah, mate. And then obviously you can tweet us, as we mentioned before, at BenjWaters01, at Edward Noack. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And until next time, have a good one.